Hi, thanks to your questions, we have a very special topic today. Um, the questions that we always get from you is, one of the questions is, um, why is my water turbid? Second question, how do you clean the water in your swim teich? Um, the answer is actually easy. The answer is, um, it's microorganisms. But I won't tell you anything anymore. Um, because we have today a very special interview partner who has dealt with this topic for I think 25 years but please um, introduce yourself to our watchers thank you uh, hello my name is Lukas Heider I'm the CEO of uh, Multicraft in Austria um, and we are working with microorganisms now for these areas and for other areas for more than 25 years Mr. Harder um, can you describe um, in two or three sentences my, the, the, the word microorganisms for our watches so that everybody can understand? I will try my best. Microorganisms are the smallest animals we have in the world. Microorganisms is a, is a large group of different animals um, like uh, yeasts, um, fungi are microorganisms, but the typical microorganisms are the small microorganisms that live on every surface, on top of us, in us, and that regulate basically everything, uh, every breakdown of organic matter in the world. For example, one group of algae, the, the blue algae, blue-green algae, the cyanobacteria are also microorganisms. The other types of algae, which we don't like in our swimming tanks, are um, plants. Um, are there different microorganisms in different milieus? Yes, so different microorganisms are in different environments here. For example, there is specialization of microorganisms in nearly every field. Microorganisms also have a generation um, time of sometimes only half an hour, sometimes a few hours, sometimes a day. So they are much quicker to adapt to any environment. They live in the most hostile environments in the world, in the desert, on these stones here, microorganisms solubilize the stone to um, to 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 get an, um, uh, to get nutrients out, so these microorganisms here, these plants, can grow. These are all done by microorganisms. How about zooplankton? Is that part of microorganisms? No, zooplankton is much much larger than microorganisms. Microorganisms are small, yeasts are a little bit larger, but zooplankton is much much larger, and it's an it's another type of animals. Um, maybe they are called macro uh, animals, but I'm not so sure in English, to be honest. Macroorganisms. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They are called like that. Mm -hmm. When you fill a, a, a swimming pond, a natural pool, mm -hmm. the first time with water, um, how do I have to imagine that? There is organism already in the water. What happens when the water gets into the hole that you have dug? Mm -hmm. What happens? Mm -hmm. Well, it always depends on which water you put inside, but traditionally we only have tap water. But it can also be that rainwater is available. But in any case, the, 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 the water is quite, it, it, the, the tap water which we usually use in, in Austria is quite dead. Because uh, communities have to put chlorine in or have to use other disinfection methods. So it's drinking water, because all our tap water here, is, here in Austria is drinking water. Um, the problem with dead water is that, um, that mostly it's, it's, it's obviously there's no life in it, there's no microorganisms and there's no balance of microorganisms in it. And what we want to have in a swimming tank is a balance of the right microorganisms. So if we start with a high nutrient tap water and you always have to look at the orthophosphate in the tap water because this is always the limiting factor whereas nitrogen is available everywhere and comes from the air. The orthophosphate is important and the more orthophosphate we have in water, the more likely we get algal, algal blooms in the water. Mm -hmm. So we try to, with uh, societies of plants, with filters, we try to introduce a lot, uh, a good microorganic uh, society mm -hmm. and with the help of microorganisms from the outside, this is sometimes easier. Okay, that leads me to the questions. What is effective microorganisms? Effective microorganisms is a, is, a, is a name of a group of microorganisms we produce for the last 25 years, but they are mainly lactic acid bacteria, there are some yeasts and there is some photosynthetic bacteria. The lactic acid bacteria um, um, uh, have, uh, are producing 
an environment, for example, in, 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 in organic matter, in filter systems, in the water, um, that, has a, a, that, that breaks down organic matter at a certain um, way. Uh, and that, that, uh, that competes for organic matter, for example, with algae. So the more different biodiversity we have in microorganisms in the water, the better it is against algal blooms. And this is why we introduce these effective microorganisms. The product is called EM Active. That's a pure microorganism mixture. I say this because there's many, many other products in the range of effective microorganisms. Um, and this is what we use to make a very high biodiversity in the water to prevent algal blooms. So basically, they're competing for the same nutrients and the more different animals, the more different micro animals, microorganisms are competing for the same, um, for the same nutrient source, the better. Mm -hmm. Very understandable. Um, so actually inoculating a freshly filled um, natural pool with EM makes sense. Yes, right? short answer is yes, exactly for this biodiversity. Uh, it, it happens naturally after a few years uh, when you have the right amount of plants, the right amount of filters, it can ha and, and, and the right amount of water. The bigger a water body is, the easier it is to, to be stable. Why? Because the bigger a water body is, or even the more different plants we have in a water body, or the more different filter materials we have in a water, water body, the, the more diverse the, uh, the, 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 the society, let's say, is in the water. And this is what happens in, in nature all the time, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a good uh, working forest all the time, but not in artificially uh, made gardens or artificially made ponds. This is where we have to introduce some more microorganisms ourselves. Uh, when I use chlorinated water, what, at what time, at what point of time do I add DEM? Usually it's a, it's a rule of thumb, it takes about 24 hours that chlorine uh, escapes from the water once it's out in the open. So we wait, we fill the pond, we wait for a day and then we start with the application of microorganisms. Good. And um, if I start with uh, the application of, uh, micro, of effective microorganisms, um, do I have to continue for a long time? What do you recommend? Well, in the, we, we usually recommend to do a, to do a treatment first in, 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 the, in the spring or in the autumn when the water is still cold. Why? because there is no other uh, microorganic societies or no other animal societies or, 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 or phyto societies in the water that it interferes with. Um, mm. If we start in the summertime, we do smaller doses, but usually we should start in the spring at cold water, then do a regular very small dose, because it always needs a little bit of top up, depending on, again, the size, depending on how well the, 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 the pond works. Like and a booster. Like a little booster, yeah, like a booster. If we go into vaccines at the, at the end, at the end of the season, before the long winter time here in Austria, with a very strong winter where it's sometimes icy on the top and underneath, there is still some organic breakdown going down. We want to be able to, to 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 steer this organic breakdown as well with benefit with our beneficial bacteria. And the better a pond works, the less uh, effective microorganisms it will need. Mm -hmm. And I have the experience. We have made the experience that. The l once you have used it and the water gets stable, it's really, it stays stable. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Once you get into That's balance? That's right. And every, every we, have, we have on our website, we have, spe we have uh, application methods, but it's always a little bit depending on the pond, but they work in basically 95, 99% of all ponds. But then you get used to your pond, you know, I don't need as much as it's recommended. I can rule down a little bit and then you just do it once in a while and you don't have to be so strict to the schedule anymore. It always depends on how much nutrients come in from the in outside. If we have a lot of rain, obviously, if we have a lot of runoff into the pond, if it's not built properly, I need more effective microorganisms. If I have less runoff and less rain from the outside, less nutrient uh, into the pond, or even if, if, I, if I swim less in the pond, yeah. or if I have yes. less kids in the pond, yes. this is the rule of thumb how much you need, basically. Mm -hmm. So okay. your own experience is always always needed for that as well. Mm -hmm. How are EM produced? Um, one can imagine a brewery for beer or a wine uh, cellar maybe because it's a similar it's a similar production with other temperatures and with other microorganisms. What we do is we have single strain microorganisms stored in a minus 80 degree refrigerator. We take them out and we basically multiply them up and in a seven stage process 
uh, seven stage fermentation we called it we produce this in the back of my cell is our production and in the end um, all of these microorganisms are mixed together. We have 160 different uh, isolates of microorganisms in our product EM Active, and they are produced together in a 10-day process. And before this, there's another seven stages to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's stored there for thir with 38 degrees, with a sugar source that's mostly sugar cane molasses, with milk sugar, with uh, um, trace elements. And at the end of this process, we have a ready-made product. Then the fermentation is stopped in a certain way, and then it's bottled into 100 milliliter bottles until 1000 liter bottles. And, uh, and in comparison with other manufacturers, do you have your secret recipe or is it always the same? You mean are effective microorganisms and everywhere the same? Yeah. No, no. I don't know about the other companies that do similar EM things, but it's definitely not the same because we've been developing this ourselves since now well, nearly 20 years, since 2004, because we started in agriculture and we needed to have very effective products in agriculture. Home and garden, pond treatment, everybody takes a little bit too much. It doesn't really matter how much it costs, if it's still cheap. But in agriculture and in animal husbandry, it needs to be very effective at a very standard rate. Is there effective microorganisms, especially for natural pools? Yes, uh, <laughs> funny you ask because we are working at the moment on a product exactly effective microorganisms for pools. The basis will be inactive because it works very well, but we have a little bit more photosynthetic bacteria in the new product that will probably come out next springtime that is especially for pools. Yes. And effective micro <laughs> microorganisms in general. Um, we would be interested to know if EM has anything to do with sustainability? Well, yes, how? yes, sustainability is obviously a big word everybody uses. It. Is it good for our environment or is it bad for our environment? And, and sustainability means it's good for our environment. Yes, definitely. All our products are organically certified. Um, all our products basically enhance the environment rather than uh, poisons that will actually have a bad effect on the environment. So the short answer is yes, there is not many technologies that are more sustainable than this and at the same time work as well. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, what kind of people are your customers? Well, probably in the beginning, the, some crazy people were our customers <laughs> because 25 years ago, microorganisms in the field where we worked with, which was animal husbandry and agriculture, home and garden came a lot later um, to the picture. Um, their microorganisms should, should have been destroyed. So this infection was Basically, the way to go, antibiotics were in every stock food uh, and pesticides were the way to go for plant protection for farmers, for, pro for professionals. So it was very tough to introduce microorganisms to an environment where people tried to get rid of a lot of microorganisms. But this was before we all knew about the beneficials of microorganisms for our body. Um, and before um, uh, Actimel, probably the most famous product from Danone, uh, came out um, for, 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 for us and before we even realized that yogurt and milk is full of microorganisms. So that was tough in the beginning. So only a very certain um, housewives basically started to, to, to use the products in their gardens and in their uh, ponds. And we weren't very successful in the actual branch that we sold to, which was agriculture. But now 90% of our customers are customers that are looking for solutions which are cheap and which work. And when we thought 25 years ago that our main field of, uh, of business would be organic agriculture, now about 90% of our customers are from conventional agriculture, that uh, are reducing pesticides, reducing antibiotics, and that save money doing it and have a better outcome in the products doing it. Great, thank you. And could you, last thing, tell us something about your um, experience that you have made overseas? Because I've read in your CV that you have been. Ah, all right, okay, yes, yes, yes. Well, we have experience with, not only in Austria. That's no, we are, I mean. we are. Our company sells into um, 35 different countries. Main countries are, of course, Austria, Germany, Poland, Italy, Switzerland, and Australia. Um, why Australia? Because I started traveling to Australia now 20 years ago. Started to spend my summers there working and uh, got to know people and together with them we founded a company very early on in the Middle East in 2006 
where we started to produce our pro of similar products. We sent concentrate to Saudi Arabia to produce our products there. Um, and now we started a company in 2015 in Australia um, where we have a separate company. We are a shareholder, the other family is shareholders and we have outside investors that are selling our products solely into agriculture. We have a production mm, okay. there, we have a farm there and okay. that's why we're also able to make this in English at the moment. <laughs> who, who, who is interested in what we're doing in Australia? It's a separate website, multicraft.com.au. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It was really interesting. Thank, Thank you. you.